<laughs> uh, welcome to another Digital Jamaica Live show. It's good to have you guys again tonight. First Kira, you can, first. Huh? I can't believe that February almost done. Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the time is just going so fast. Yes. Right. Um, guys, first thing before we go further, your left earring. We got to watch out, you know. Your left earring, fix it. Yes. Okay. Have a look out, you know. All right, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, apolo apologizing for my absence last week, guys. I, I I just could not cross it. I could not cross it last week at all. So apologizing for my absence, but now I'm back. And Monique, you did a fantastic job last week. Can I tell you? Thanks. Fantastic job last week. That conversation with well, Gerard was amazing. Was and amazing. literally, guys, if you haven't watched it yet, you need to go and check it out. Honestly, it was such an easy conversation to have. And I still have my notes like, listen, if you missed it, you need to go find the replay because gems were shared. Okay. Yes, lots of gems uh worship. Why my glasses look so wonky? <laughs> my glasses need straightening, but we're gonna work with it for today. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we have a very special guest with us tonight. Somebody you probably already know because she's probably know. Everybody know her, yeah. She's been out in the streets. So everybody know who um, she is. It's Naomi Garrick, CEO of Garrick Communications, uh, a.k.a. PR Chick. Yeah. And she is here to talk to us about personal branding, specifically how to get your message across accurately, effectively, how to effectively communicate your yeah. brand to people all right so that's going to be an amazing conversation because naomi always brings the sauce okay awesome. but before <laughs> money you're like a sound effect <laughs> well before we go into that guys uh some news roundup and whoa nelly whoa do we have a lot of news? I mean, I think this is the most exciting. The tech space has been in Jamaica for a while. A minute. Uh, uh, <laughs> Wally puttings, Wally puttings going on. Wally put conversations happening. And it's actually the silver lining to, to all that's going on. And guys, I'm really talking about the whole jam COVID app debacle. The, the, symbol, the silver lining so all that's been going on is that the public is literally getting a baptism by fire. <laughs> yeah, the people don't have a choice. Um, public awareness is now up a yeah. thousand percent around data privacy and data security, security. something that we've been talking about for so long. Yeah, and just like just as how COVID was the impetus for us to start having conversations about digital and digital transformation, this whole mishap has been the impetus for us to start talking about data security and privacy. So yeah. in a way, or what you can say, this is the, a good takeaway. Yes. But guys, this is what I want Jamaicans to understand. And what you're seeing happening with TechCrunch and Zach Whitaker is actual journalism. This is, this is what I want you guys to understand. You're, you're, you're seeing actual journalism at play. Whoa. And this is not a slight to Jamaican journalists because Jamaican journalists are among some of the best anywhere in, in the, the world. world. Yes. But yes. what it is is that we don't have journalists who are informed and who have not even a baseline understanding as it relates to technology. We just don't. We don't have tech journalism happening in this in, in, in Jamaica. So yeah. what you usually see happens is when something happens in the tech world, journalists will call in the professionals, the tech professionals to come and explain. The problem with getting tech professionals to come in and explain is that they speak a completely different language than everybody else. Yeah, and <laughs> right? if you don't understand so, the concept. So sometimes trying to understand them is yeah. difficult, which is why you have tech journalists, because yeah. they should be able to take large 
complex subject matters and break them down and then mm -hmm. relay them to the general public in such a way that the public can understand understand it yeah that's but it the other thing too which is this no this is a slight against jamaica journalists oh, hold on hold on before you go that, to the against the journalists because if they don't I, just to underscore the point you just make if they don't understand the concepts or the stuff themselves anything this supposed expert come and tell you that's gospel. You can't investigate. You can't. You don't know what to ask. You, can't, you, you don't, don't know, know what to ask. Yeah. You don't know yeah. how to bring out the information. You don't know, like um, that one on Mellow FM. You don't know what they don't know. <laughs> exactly. So um, the other thing too, and I, and I was saying, this is a slight against Jamaican journalists. Now, now I'm throwing shade. Yeah, the follow up Zach yeah. Whitaker's follow up game is very strong, <laughs> yeah. right? Now, guys, yeah. what you need to understand about TechCrunch TechCrunch is one of the largest online publications on tech, largest anywhere. TechCrunch is a well known, well respected, and trusted uh, publication on tech which means that anything they put out, people are automatically going to give the benefit of the doubt because these people research, they, they are not people just talk. They have access to the who is who of who in tech, which means that the information that they're giving you most times is first-hand information. Yeah. Yeah. So just to put that out there, and then look at Dibi Dibi, and this no. is a serious oh. publication with we, Dibi yeah. Dibi. Yeah. And Zach Whitaker is the chief editor for um, tech editor for TechCrunch. I think his title is something else, but that's pretty much what he does. Now, a part of this whole thing that I want you guys to understand is why Zach Whitaker is responding the way he is responding to the government's response. A couple of yeah. things. And the first thing is this TechCrunch has a reputation to protect. Yeah, and the Jamaican government has put something out that could mm -hmm. imply something that TechCrunch ain't about. They ain't on that. No. They are not on that at all. So when yeah. the Jamaican government responded to say criminal investigations are going to be happening, yeah, to see if anybody breached or whatever they said, something to that effect. TechCrunch <laughs> said, I go. First of all, right, because they took a defensive stance now because what are, you trying, what are you trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, I sat yeah. down yesterday and I had a very comprehensive conversation with Trevor Forrest, who is a cybersecurity expert. And we went through the I timeline of the event forensically. We picked everything apart. We explained all the terminologies. What is ethical hacking um, or white hacking versus black hacking? Why ethical hackers are so important to the tech field and why they are the wrong person for you to piss off. Hackers are the wrong people for you to piss off. Whether, whether ethical hackers or unethical hackers, they are not the people you want to get on the wrong side of. But ethical hackers act as a buffer between you and unethical and bad actors, right? Because these are the people who go around and test your systems to make sure that they're working. Because guys, let, let's just get this clear. What happened with Jump COVID app, the vulnerabilities that were exposed, that's not the big deal, you know? Yes, people data may have been leaked. There may have been a breach, but there's no evidence of a breach. The government was correct but there, a vulnerability was exposed. Guys, every system has a vulnerability and it is impossible, impossible for a developer to know what all the vulnerabilities could be. That's not, that's not gonna be something that comes up until after that system goes live, right? Now, mind you, this system went live in 48 hours, which means there's not a lot of testing that was done. But that's a whole other conversation. That's like three however, days. Mm -hmm. However, however, yeah, the vulnerability is an issue. You're going to have vulnerabilities all the time. 
You see, the yeah, response to what happens, that the is response. what um, compounded the problem. Yes. And yeah. the fact that the government was slow to react, and that Amber is igniting people, igniting the situation with provocative statements, none of this is helping us. Because if we're going to look at ethical hackers and researchers and say to them, so we don't want to do tell we're not it. We are going to be in serious problem. bottom hole. Yeah. Because yeah, we, we rely on these people to help us shore up our systems. No and government, think, not the US government, they think of the richest country in the world. They cannot afford a cybersecurity attack. Nobody the, can afford a cybersecurity attack, much less we. So notice how everybody much less in a pandemic. hackers. They embrace them because they are necessary. They are a necessary component when we're talking about cybersecurity. The Jamaican government missed the mark with their response. Yes. To be fair to them, however, they had to take a certain stance because we do have laws here that talks about cybersecurity. And if it is that somebody did breach, you no, know, vulnerability and breaches are two different things. And guys, that conversation with Trevor Forrest comes out next week, Wednesday, on our podcast. I urge you to listen to it because he literally explained everything, the difference between vulnerability and breach and why vulnerability is inevitable and why a breach is can be criminal. So when that comes out, please go and listen to it. But we can't afford to piss these people off. The government responded strongly, but there's a difference between a strong response and a subtle or vague threat. And I see how TechCrunch could have interpreted the government response as a vague threat, which is how they literally interpret it, interpreted it, which is why they went ahead and start list, um, dashing out receipts. Receipts, yeah. No, the receipts thing no. were like flying out and everybody is like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the thing this though, is why you don't the piss these people off. Vulnerability is one thing, but yeah. the in putting out systems, there are certain checks and balances, and there are certain basic um, it, there are certain basic infrastructure setup that really just should not happen. And this is one of the examples of something that really should not have happened um, in terms of the information um, being exposed. And I we think don't, we actually don't know if information was exposed. We actually don't know. Well, what we know no. is that vulnerability was exposed. We don't know if information was actually exposed. Well, we don't know or and cannot tell if somebody went in and accessed the information. What we know is that there's nothing preventing them from doing that, or there was nothing preventing someone from doing that. But there's nowhere, there's no way to know. Well, why as you said last week, Monique, and as you said on Tech Time. Them not no hackers are not gonna go. Hey guys, so I'm breaking into your system. Yeah, yeah. and I'm taking your information. Yeah, no. Yeah, why? Are, why? 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 Don't leave traces. You yeah. Why I, phrased it, why I phrased it that way is by virtue of even even if TechCrunch was the one organization that identified and found the thing, it was still identified. And found. No, TechCrunch did not say they found people's information online. TechCrunch said they found a vulnerability. They found a way to access the information. TechCrunch they actually were, did not say they accessed the information. No, man. They, they, they would they never interested. say that. No, they listed and said how many passport information was included. They listed the um, thousands of amazing Yes, what they're the saying folder. is that there somebody could have access that information that's what they said we have to be very careful because nobody has said there has been a breach and breach means somebody accessed that information TechCrunch did not say that and the government did not say that Amber did not say that which is why I want you guys to listen to that episode with Trevor first because he literally brought down the difference between a vulnerability and a breach we do not know if a breach has actually happened we know that vulnerabilities were spotted and that that meant that people's data could have been exposed. Yeah. 
we don't know if that has actually happened, right? Mm -hmm. But but guys, it's a mess. And then after that whole thing happened and Amber coming out, saying it with them chest, yeah? And, and getting all excited, provocative, and um, uh, what, 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 what <laughs> defamation? Somebody needs to explain to Mr. Savaria what, def what defamation means. Yeah. Right? But um, Ted Crouch went again and found another vulnerability. And then it's funny how they say that, oh, it's almost as if they say, well, we find an next vulnerability. And then um, Amber says, well, yeah, but that information is no longer useful. No longer since when? That information has been accessible to any and everybody. You don't yeah. have no knowledge of tech or hacking to have access to that information. For as I say, it was just handed out there, right? So yeah. since when was that information no longer valid? And says who? Yeah. That, that information is no longer valid. So it is... Yeah. And then you had this other organization it, who came out and said, oh, we check and the system is fine. The system is fine. But there's a difference between the system and the app. The app yeah. sits on top of the system. Yeah. So on a check, the server and the server fine. But that's not where the vulnerability was. The vulnerability was on the app. So that too was misleading, which is why I know that whosoever reported that story don't know nothing about tech and data security because the headline was misleading. It's a, it's a mess. It's it's a whole mess. So in that episode well, with Trevor Forrest, we, we yeah. went and we de dissected the situation. We spoke about the response and what the response should have been and why the response that, that the government issued was not effective and could actually put Jamaica in problems in terms of our relationship with the tech community, especially the people in the tech community who's working to secure online systems. Nobody wants to piss those people off because you need them. Because otherwise, they're the same people that you're going to call, but no, you're going to have to pay them. And believe me, we cannot afford to pay them. Yeah? And then the ramifications, because the government may have been exposed to litigation. They're, they may be exposed to litigation from the, the general data protection regulations, which is what we call the GDPR mm -hmm. um, from the EU. And if we want to do business with the EU, we have to acquiesce to this, which means that there's no wriggling out of it. And if yeah. somebody in the UK or in Europe decides that I'm going to be mischievous and sue the government, it's the government who has to answer for this, not Amber, because according to the GDPR, it's the data controller who is liable, not the data processor. And in this situation, the data controller is, is the, the government. government. The data processor is Amber. Is Amber Group. Exactly. Yeah. And the data controller is who is responsible. And it's the exact same thing that our law says, because our law, our Data Protection Act, mirrors the GDPR in many ways. It had to, right? In many ways. Yeah. And our law says the exact same thing. So the government could actually fall on their own sword. Their own act can indict them. The yeah. only good for them is that the, our Data Protection Act don't come into play until 2022. So they may escape locally, but they may not be able to es escape international. um, internationally. Yeah, Guys, listen to that episode next week. It is super informative. And Trevor went in with the information. Okay, that comes out on Wednesday. Um, of next week, guys. But in other news story, we have more uh lighter story. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what? Where is to go? Um, so the next story, Monique, over to you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull out one more story, and then after we have the conversation to kind of wrap up, we can kind of come back. Um, yes. so because I want to have this conversation uh, with Naomi. Um, one another government organization, NWC, uh, warns of fake social media accounts. Now, still on the uh, um the conversation of uh cybersecurity and data protection and citizens understanding, um, having some form of digital literacy being super super important. Um, NWC has fallen victim. Um, and Jamaicans have fallen victim because 
persons have created fake Instagram accounts, as in multiple people's accounts, yeah. Impersonating the National Water Commissioner, not because it's NWC today, they can do the same thing with JPS. They can do the same thing with, yeah. <laughs> Um, and they've been encouraging legitimate customers to make credit card payments under false pretenses. <laughs> so you think you're paying your water bill when in real life, a scammer is just skimming your, your card information. You think you're paying $1,000 and they're gone with uh, your entire, yeah, they're gone with your money. Yeah. So be very careful. This is another reason why verification of our accounts is so important. Another reason yeah. why uh, actually having a strong presence and uh, presenting yourself in a professional, consistent manner that people can come to expect a certain look, a certain feel, a certain tone, a certain is so important, especially from our uh, government and, and these agencies. I don't know, no money. This is my thing. Yes. Why don't why aren't more Jamaicans blue tick verified? That's what I don't understand. Because I see a lot of Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts that can be verified because they're they're over the ten thousand mark. And even though Instagram will tell you that oh it doesn't depend on the numbers, we know they ain't true, right? So once you're over a certain amount of numbers of followers, you can go and get yourself blue tick verified. And it's the same thing I said on Twitter and I responded to NWC. I was like, guys, go and get yourself blue tick verified because a blue tick verification authenticates your page. That being said, and a blue tick, blue tick verification is hard to fake. So that means say, if me get a message from NWC and me not see the blue tick, me I gonna know that something is up. It's one very easy, very obvious way of verifying your account. Guys, if you have over 10,000 followers on your account, go and get yourself blue tick verified. It, it really does help. All right, yeah. guys? So, All right. Without any further ado, our very special guest for this evening, uh, she is the PR chick. She is the personal branding and professional branding and PR extraordinaire. She is the beautiful, the effervescent, the lively, Naomi Garrick. Welcome, Naomi. Hi, the guys. Live show. Wow, Monique. I'm going to have to take you everywhere with me to do that intro. Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Naomi, we're so happy to have you on with us. And listen, this is what we like. Kenya, we talked about this. Reaching out, and now we can just say some of our Jamaican people, we call Naomi one time. The answer was <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> yeah? Of course. So we want to talk about personal branding um, because all of these things are happening. Even the stories that we talked about earlier, though they are about cybersecurity, et cetera, all of them still come back to your brand and how we deal with certain situations, yeah? Absolutely. So um, we naturally thought uh, of, of you to join us for this conversation. Well, thank you, ladies. I'm super happy to be here. Okay, so uh, we have a lot of persons uh, within our community who either are building their own personal brands or they may be entrepreneurs uh, starting to uh, build their business, yeah? But a lot of persons have an idea or they know they want to show up in the online space, but they're not really sure how. Kind of sure with how to 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 um put this brand together so how can persons who are looking to get started to make that first step um start building their personal brand online how do they get started okay sure so that's a really great question and before we even talk about how you get started it's important mm -hmm. to understand what the personal brand is right mm -hmm. um and the personal brand is a couple of different things it's how you see yourself it's how others see you it's what people say when you're not in the room but yes. more importantly it has also become what google has to say about you 
And that's why the online brand has become so relevant right now because anyone can search for your brand with just the click of a button, right? Yeah. On a simple online search. And not all the times what's showing up online is a true representation of who we are in this moment or the brand that we are currently building. And that's why it's so important because a lot of individuals will make their decision about whether working with you, hiring you, using your products and services based on what they find when they do this online search. So I yeah. think that's why the personal brand has become even more relevant right now because the rest of the world has such easy access to it. But essentially, with your personal or professional brand, there are two things that are really important. It's about what do you want to be known for? And it's also about the unique problem that you solve, right? Who is your mm -hmm. ideal audience? Mm -hmm. And so you have to start there. So what I normally advise my clients is I use a three-step method, the CVC, and it's clarity, value, and communication. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get clarity on who you are as an individual, what's most important to you, what are some of your core values, what are your goals? And then you talk about your unique value. What is it that you do well or you do better than someone else or what is that unique problem that you solve? What is it that you have learned through your personal journey and experiences that you can bring to a space that someone else cannot? Because at the end of the day, you will find many people that are in your field of expertise that may do exactly what you do. But because of your experiences, because of your own journey, because of your education, it allows you to do something differently. There is no one in the world that does what you do exactly the way that you do it. Yeah, and so it's very important. Table. Yeah, exactly. So it's very important yeah. for you to understand what that differentiator is in your space mm -hmm. so that that's what you are promoting as a part of your personal brand. So you want to think about what is it that I want to be known for? So for me, example, I wanted to be known as the PR chick. And yeah. it's a brand that I have been building continuously. I'm very or intentional yes. about the brand because yeah. I want to be known as the PR chick because being known as a PR chick, I'm also known for two main things, personal branding and public relations. But all of that falls under this brand, the PR chick. So that's what I want to be known for. So I'm intentional about how I communicate that. And that's what comes to the third step. So it's clarity, value and communication. And with communication, you have to know who you're communicating to. So who is your ideal audience? Or in marketing, we use the term brand avatar. And that's getting very specific with who you are trying to attract, whose problems do you solve, or who actually needs to know about you so that you are communicating with them in the right spaces. So you have to understand yourself, understand your brand, understand your value, and then know how to communicate it efficiently and effectively to the people that need to know who you are. I love that so much because I think um, a lot of us kind of get lost or we get overwhelmed when we start yes. thinking branding and it seems so airy fairy. Yeah. And it sounds <laughs> that you, you kind of say later for that. And, you know, I'm focusing on what I'm doing now. Uh, yeah. But as just to kind of pull it out, you started with introspection. You started with absolutely, literally, what am I trying to do here? What am I trying to say? Uh, what's the point? What's the purpose what's of the point? This? And first of all, I felt like I was in a masterclass a while ago because <laughs> don't let anybody else notice or realize that Naomi just dropped like you had to do a semester at UA and she just said it so, so so fluently and so you know that <laughs> and in simple language that um that you still understand it but that was actually a lot of information so yeah. the, and, and the, you know Monique one of the things is you know people think that as you said that this personal brand or professional brand is this airy fairy thing that you need to get but the reality is we you every single individual already has a personal brand mm -hmm. because I can guarantee you that anybody that meets you, they form an impression of you based on that interaction. They form an impression of you based on what they see showing up for you online. 
So you are unconsciously already creating this personal brand. But the thing is, is this what you want to be known for? And so with the personal brand, we have the opportunity to develop and craft our messages exactly the way that we want to do it. Mm. So I love that you're there because now we've reached the message, right? And what we are communi- what we are communicating, yeah? Once I've identified what I want to say, how do I do that in the online space? How Great. do I know now what I want to say and have an idea of who I'm talking to? How do I do it? So what I would say is the key is to knowing who you're talking to. And mm-hmm. by knowing who you're talking to, you know where your audience lives online. Mm-hmm. And what happens is sometimes we get so caught up in just getting this online presence and we show up on Instagram or LinkedIn. And that's not necessarily, maybe our audience lives on TikTok, but we're not there. So you have to, when you understand who your audience is, then you can start finding out where they hang out online so that you're also hanging out in that space and you're being engaging and you're being interactive and you are answering questions that solve their problems. So an example I would give is for my brand, um, I realized I have multiple audiences. I find that through my Instagram page for the PRG, I tend to attract individuals who are learning about the personal brand for the first time, and they may be interested in joining a free webinar or buying my workbook or some low entry um, kind of product that gets them a little bit of understanding of the brand. Higher for your activities sometimes. Right. So so maybe they will purchase an online course or something like that, right? Anything Mm -hmm. that's under 100 US dollars. But... On LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is the place where professionals go to do business globally, mm-hmm. right? You hear it co-signed. You hear it co-signed by the PR cartel. Yeah, I mean, LinkedIn, and I'll tell you my experience that happened during this COVID period as well. So as a coach, I encourage all of my clients to get on LinkedIn. And when I say get on LinkedIn, I don't mean have an online resume, which is what a lot of people do, especially oh. here in Jamaica. Yes. It is such an amazing platform to connect with people, like-minded individual professionals from around the world. And Mm -hmm. in the same way that we engage and interact with people on Instagram is the same way we need to be engaging and interacting and following and commenting and providing value on LinkedIn. So I find that through LinkedIn, you know, as I said, I teach my clients to get online, update their profiles, create their headline statements. Um, and be present on the platform. But to be honest, I really wasn't doing the same. I just really didn't have the time. What COVID-19 brought was a lot of time. And so I started actually, <laughs> you get I, I, started, I started actually repurposing content that I'd used on Instagram for years, rewording it a little bit, maybe using a different image, but pretty much the same content, but changing the language slightly for the audience that's on LinkedIn. And my following grew so much. I got invited to be a part of webinars all over the world with people I'd never met before. Um, I got a lot of new coaching clients through LinkedIn. I got new people joining my webinars and that's just because I was showing up in the space, not trying to sell a product or service, but just by adding value and positioning myself as an expert and a thought leader and not being afraid to connect with other people in my space from around the world. Because what happened was I started following and liking and engaging with other personal branding coaches from all over the world. And then we built relationships. And so they would invite me on their platforms. I'd invite them on my platforms. And then because of that, both of our networks would expand. Yes. And so collaboration leads to a lot of new opportunities that we maybe weren't looking for before. But we have to be showing up in a consistent and meaningful way where we're always providing value to our audience. We're always trying to figure out what are our audience's problems so that we can solve them. But as I said, it goes back to understanding where they live. Where are they hanging out online so that you can make sure you're hanging out in that space too? Yeah, where they live, what their needs are, how you can fill them based on, again, your introspection that you'd have done yes. already because now you know what you're about. And, and again, don't, just go, don't just go in for the kill, right? Don't just yeah. go in for the sale. Yeah. People get turned off by that. You have to add value. Go leap. 
Naomi just dropped a lot of information. So I'm repeating because I know it can gloss over. You hear them? Yeah. But Naomi talked about exercising your expertise. And she gave an example of how she did it by providing value. And a lot of it was content and stuff she already had. Yeah. Just Didn't repurposing. She- but targeting it, targeting, tar- targeting it to that specific audience. Yes, yes. Um, and I so- want you guys to notice something Naomi said as well. Naomi said, I tweaked it a little bit. I changed the image and I've changed some words. And that's, that's, that I think is a very important area because a part of communication, and you can let me know if I'm on something here, Naomi, a part of communication is that you know how to talk to your audience. Yeah. It's not just knowing where they are, but knowing how to talk to them because your audience on LinkedIn is a different conversation, different tone, different language, yeah. different presentation as your audience on Instagram or Twitter. So understanding the platform is one thing, understanding who the persons are who use the platform is another thing, and then tailoring your content, your message, your communication strategy to match that is also very important. And and what what, what I would add to that is, a lot of testing and measuring, right? Yes, the great thing yes. with platforms like Instagram is that, especially if you have a business page, which is what I would recommend to any individual, you get to see a lot more of the insights and the analytics. So you can know yeah. what your audience responds to. So you can take one piece of content, maybe a 10 minute video, and you end up breaking that down into five shorter videos. You can transcribe the content and turn that into a long form article on LinkedIn. You can turn it into quotes. You can turn it into a slideshow. There's so much you can do with one piece of content and then break it up to use on the different platforms. But Mm -hmm. I test and measure all the time. So I know already that what people respond to really well to me on LinkedIn is when I share some kind of PDF document or I do some kind of 10 steps to something right? Yeah, Those I are the type of content for me that gets a lot of shares. Um, I get a lot of comments, video yes. all the time. I thought the character every platform. you did as well, Naomi, that was, that was on heavy rotation on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the thing. You have to just try out different things to see what your audience likes. I'm yeah. amazed all the time when I check out my Instagram um, insights sometimes that people resonate more sometimes with just two, two things people seem to like on my Instagram. Pictures of me with good copy and also if I put like a quote yeah and yeah. it's in, so it's interesting to see what your audience likes and if you realize if your audience only wants to see quotes then just do quotes all the time yeah. you don't need to reinvent the wheel right and your yeah. audience will tell you your audience will tell you what 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 they like and the great thing is yeah. that you can see what they share and what they say and that's a really good indicator. So I tell people, don't look on the likes. Sometimes don't even look on the comments. Look to see what people are saving. Look to see what people are sharing. Because if they took the time to save it, that means they want to go back to it. If they took the time to share it, that means they found value in it that they thought could benefit somebody else. Mm-hmm. Yes. So those are awesome. the metrics that I look at to determine what kind of content I need to create on the different platforms. Okay. So- So a conversation that comes up all the time and I'm unfortunately we're still having this conversation though COVID has happened (laughs) when I ask a question you'll get it yeah um you've proven your success in the traditional space over and over again time and time again talk in any corporate space in any room Call Naomi Garrick name, people know who you are. Yeah. So you've already established a brand within a traditional space. Why was it so important for you to solidify that and bring that over? Even in saying PR chief, which is still young and trendy and ooh, yeah, fresh, yeah, fresh. <laughs> Why was it so important for you to, um, because you started this long time before COVID, yeah? Yes, yes. Why was it so important for you to transition um, your expertise over into the, the digital space? Um, well, to me, it's an obvious answer. You know, you, your reach. 
through mm-hmm. traditional media, you're only targeting whoever is here in Jamaica that watches TV or reads a newspaper um, or listens to radio. When you're online, you target the whole world. Mm-hmm. And it allows me to introduce myself over and over again to different people who don't know me, who don't know me as a PR chick, who don't know me as a personal branding coach, but needs my services or expertise. So online gives me an opportunity to really, I guess, stretch my wings and reach a lot more people that I think I can help or bring value to. And so it's so important that, you know, what is happening now in this global space is that the world has gotten bigger, but it's also gotten very small because Mm -hmm. we're all showing up online, which means that we have to do a lot more work to differentiate ourselves and to stand out in our areas of expertise. And so it has to be very consistent and very deliberate with our approach and how we're trying to reach our audience. And it's like, you have to keep doing it over and over and over because there's this thing called social proof, right? So you can tell people you are the expert or I'm Naomi Garrick and I'm the PR chick, great. You've never heard of me before. So the first thing you're gonna do is a Google search. And if you go online and you search for Naomi Garrick or the PR chick and you see nothing related to the things I told you I'm the expert in, then you almost start to think, is this person for real? <laughs> like, and then maybe what you will do is you'll see somebody else that comes up in the search that says they're the expert and you move on to that person. And they yeah. may not be the expert, yeah. but they're showing up online. And so it's important for you to create this social proof that people are using to make decisions about you. And that's why things like writing, are using traditional media as well, but getting it online. So being a contributor to your local newspaper is a great way to solidify your expertise, but then it mm-hmm. also comes with an online link and that shows up in a Google search for you. So it's a balance between both, right? So it's, traditional media is still very, very important. And I also yeah. think we have a lot of opportunities to get placements in traditional media because people are not as out and about as they were before, but they still need content every day. And so now is a great time to start even pitching articles or features to your local newspapers or to global newspapers because you can find all of them online. I mean, if you go on any magazine online, you can find who the editor is for a specific section. Do a pitch because all that does is it helps to promote your brand and promote you as an expert so that when people care about you and they search for you, your online brand actually connects with your real life brand. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So thank you. Um, are there any tips or any pointers that you'd like um, that you can share um, with our listeners who may be looking to create their own um, online brand and want it to stand out? Sure. So the first thing I'd say is ensure that you have an updated online profile on all your platforms, right? Because your online profile is basically the business card for your brand right now. It has your professional headshot, which is what I would recommend. And that's fine if you can't go to someone um, to do a professional photo shoot. Everyone has a smartphone. You just want to dress the way that you want to be addressed. You find a nice clean background that you can use so that there's not too much distraction. And you show up for your audience. Ensure that you have a clear headline statement that speaks to who you are, what you do, and who you do it for. But in addition to that, ensure that if you use this headline statement, the content Mm -hmm. that people actually see on your page is aligned with what you (laughs) said you do. So you don't want to say that you are the best shoemaker in the world. And then when I go on your Instagram page, I see nothing about shoes. It's going to throw off your audience. Yeah. And so I think that's very, very important. Having a very strong headline statement that clearly communicates who you are, what you do, and who you do it for ensure you have a really good um, professional headshot, ensure that your profiles are updated. Actually, the number one thing I would say is Google yourself. Google yourself and do an online brand audit and see what everyone else sees when they search for your name or your brand. A lot of us don't do that. I have Google alerts for my name so that I know if something new pops up that I'm not aware of, it may be something that I'm not happy with and I can address it because I know it's there. Yeah. So the first thing I'd say is do just do an online audit, see what everyone else sees, right? Maybe mm-hmm. your LinkedIn page comes up first that you haven't, haven't gone on in 10 years. 
Um, but that's the first thing someone sees, <laughs> and you right? You realize, uh, you have to go fix so. Yeah. Exactly. Or yeah. it could be your Instagram page. And maybe that's not the page that you want your clients to go to first yes. when they search yeah. for you. So you have to be aware of actually what is showing up in those spaces for you when people search for you and your brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would and say the- that when you discover mm-hmm. what you want to do, be consistent. Ask your, your audience what they want to hear from you because they'll tell you. You just have to ask them and don't be afraid to try out new platforms. Don't be afraid to go live. I know it can be very weird sometimes because you feel like you're talking to yourself. And what if nobody shows up on my live or only one person shows up? That's fine. Be your best self for that one person. It will continue (laughs) to grow over time. No one started a page with a million followers. It started with one. So take your time and don't be discouraged. Don't feel pressured. Um, but it is important to start showing up with your brand in that online space because the rest of the world is already there and they're not waiting for you to join. Amen. Yeah. I mean, that last line, though, straight <laughs> though, because that mic it drop. <laughs> no, yeah, my drop. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, we could go all, all, all even with um, Naomi because, you yeah. know, another, another thing too is consistency, being consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Naomi said it, she's been doing this for some for some time, you know, consistently yeah. engaging. And, and I'm honestly oh, not as first consistent of all, as I Naomi need to be, so that's what I need to work on. <laughs> what was that, Naomi? I said, I'm actually not as consistent as I need to be, but I'm working on it. Yeah, right. I mean, sometimes you'll fall off, but for, for the most part over the years, you've been consistent. I mean, yes. uh, uh Naomi's brand is so strong that I knew she was going to show up here with red lipstick on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right? I knew. I was yes. thinking that was going to happen. The hairstyle is consistent. Funky glasses. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? So that, that's, that's, that's kind of a part of um, your brand, always making sure that yeah. you're showing up consistently, that you're, the quality of your showing up is not just you're showing up, but you're yeah. showing up at a consistently high level mm-hmm. all the I time. Anytime I hope you put anything you know, so. out, it's always good. You can always, you can lock your eye and know it's going to be good because there's yeah. a consistent quality that comes with it. So that's also important. Thank you, guys. Yes. So, Which is why you. she's here talking to y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Naomi, uh, for your words of wisdom. Um, are there any final words or anything that you want to plug, anything coming up, anything we can look out for? Sure, 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 sure. So first of all, thank you so much, ladies. It was a pleasure um, being a part of your um, live tonight. I hope your viewers got some great content and that they won't be afraid to start, right? And oh, yeah. I think that is really the thing. People are afraid to just start start where you are start small slowly take your time that's fine but you have to just at least start doing something um what i would say is coming up i actually have been working on i i released during covid i created an online course to building your personal brand and what i can do for your audience is i'll send you a code money that you can send to them so they can get a special price to access the course What I also recently created, but I haven't released it to the public yet, another course on building your online brand. Mm -hmm. So I currently have two courses online that are available and I will send you the details. So guys, you have it from the experts. Yeah. Um, All the information that you need to know about creating your own online brand. And the message is, just start. you got to start somewhere. Naomi, thank you so much for joining us. This isn't the last time you're going to hear from us. <laughs> we have big things in store for 2021. And awesome. you know we have your number on speed dial. <laughs> thank you, guys. It was certainly a pleasure being here. All right. Thank you so much, Naomi. Bye. All right, guys. Wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that awesome, <laughs> Naomi? Naomi always, always, always brings the sauce. And I just, I just allow money to do I think because guys, you know, the notice that money turned big interview. Huh? <laughs> on a notice that yeah, money boy, come on. interviewing <laughs> skills have um, improved. Hey, hey. Can you come so, off of this? 
<laughs> oh, or our resident interviewer because I mean I'm still on the splendiferous job that she did last week. And of course, again this week in talking uh to Naomi. So clap her. Gonna clap her. <laughs> All right. So very quickly because I mean, as Katie said in the beginning, there were a lot of juicy stories. So the next one that's up in line is that Spotify, there, Spotify is here in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So they have actually launched in 15 Caribbean markets that's going to be now and over the next few days. And it's a part of a bigger launch, the biggest launch they've ever done at one time where they're opening 80, as in eight zero markets across Asia, Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Um, and this is going to expand their streaming footprint to over 180 different markets. Now, if you remember, Spotify owns Anchor. So this opens up, it, it's not just about streaming and you can listen to music. You, it opens up monetization opportunities for people who do podcasts. Hello! And <laughs> for musicians Hello. and anybody who is in audio so it is a big deal um and it's it's really a bigger push if you had that idea if you had that mixtape that you want to drop if you have that podcast idea you've been sitting on what you're waiting for go for it yes, yes. drop the yes. next one pandem Abe, pardon? drop the next one pandem <laughs> All right, guys. So, you know, we are always looking for Jamaicans who are in the tech and digital space who are doing amazing things. And this week we came across the story of 11-year-old Do Dominic Darby, uh, who just won. So he beat out 70. He beat out uh, competition from over from 70 other countries, right, uh, for the X Prize connect code game challenge um now uh uh x prize is um they're kind of like a social initiative but they're based in tech and every year they were not right throughout the year they run different um games and challenges and stuff right and competition so uh, in, uh, in this instance Dominic entered the competition again. Over 70 persons from over 70 countries entered. There were over 800 comp um, competitors. And Dominic Darby, who is 11, won and in his Jamaica. category. Jam yes. he's, he's, the, he's the junior um, he's best champion. Scratch uh, junior division. Class scratch junior division. And he won by creating a video game. Um, um, so guys, we actually have up our digital Jamaica news feed. We've actually started putting together news stories. Um, news make sure that you're checking our stories regularly because we put um, the news in there and the link is always in our bio. You can click the link and get access to these stories. And there's also a video link there. You can go and watch the interview with Dominic Darby in completely much of the place. The judges loved him. He did a fabulous job. So congratulations to Dominic Darby. Guys, we have some extraordinary young people in this country, you see? Oh my day, some extraordinary young people in this country and we congratulate him um, on that. But yeah, the, the big, big news. Yeah. <laughs> big, 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 big news. <laughs> so you guys have heard us talk about digital currency. Yeah. And we are still actively working on getting somebody who has the 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 the, the, the um information and competence to talk to you guys about digital currency. Mm -hmm. So we've been watching this thing progress because the Caribbean has been leading the world as it when it comes to digital currency. Believe it or not, the Caribbean we need is the world. Yeah, right. How we so need it. How we not e good. <laughs> so what happened a couple of weeks ago, Eastern Caribbean Bank actually successfully tested their uh, uh, digital currency and they're now going to, in the process of rolling out. So by the end of this month, 
they're going to be fully rolled. Their, their currency would have been fully rolled out and operational, right? Bap. And you know, Jamaica is in testing mode for our um, yeah. central, care, central bank digital currency, CBDC. And you know, we talked about WePay, right? WePay was on here a couple of weeks ago answering all your questions. Well, all of those things have converged and connect because now WePay has partnered with MTech to announce that they are in the process of developing a Caribbean bank currency. So this is not individual Caribbean states developing their own digital currency, but this is a Caribbean currency called yeah. WeCoin, W-I-C-O-I coin. And it is, yeah. is FUBU, for us, by us, okay? Yeah. Um, so it's by and from the Caribbean expressly, explicitly. Okay. Yeah. So get this, guys. According to Statista, the Caribbean B2C e-commerce market is valued at five billion US dollars and is growing at approximately 25% annually. Yeah. Only see why we've been on this e-commerce thing and why we've been encouraging y'all to get with it because yeah. there is money to be made. Okay. And okay. once we can get our online payment processing systems working then and available, my girl, nobody can't win again. What's that way? I will have to yes. sell. Hello, a Jamaica will come from a William Jamaica. <laughs> with you know what? Me really excited about this area because yes. this is a Caribbean initiative. What this means is it makes it easier for me to buy from somebody in St. Kitts and Nevis or Trinidad. We, I yes. can pay them and then get their money and get my things. So that's what makes this so exciting for me. It, yes. it, it's that breaking down those barriers and when we spoke with WePay, they talked about their infrastructure, which really allows persons to get paid to their bank account, whether somebody in Timbuktu or whatever. So with their existing infrastructure... Um, Plus additional infrastructure. Plus e-commerce. We, we pay no come here for play. WePay ain't playing with y'all. And you know then what else you know? Win. Okay, and snatching money out of our bank's pockets because yeah, our bank we, we've been lame. begging we've been because begging but we pay we we pay guys, we now we now for yeah and the next thing that i'm happy about these are the to the next thing guys we yeah. said this a long time ago i'm in a first so we you say it long time it takes one enterprising person yeah or company to come up with a fintech solution for Jamaica and the Caribbean, I will bank them out of business. Yeah, yeah. One enterprising person or company mm -hmm. with a fintech solution, and that's what this is. I want you guys to understand that that's what this is. Yeah. No, I am not saying that this is going to replace currency. However, yeah. it is going to make trade a lot easier. Yeah. And yeah. cross border training, trading a lot easier, which means that there's a significant boost to our e commerce sector, which is already worth how much? Five billion dollars. Do you know how much money Jamaicans transacted online last year? 13 billion dollars worth of online transaction took place in Jamaica last year. 13 billion. We're not afraid for all money online. All right. Clearly, when time, yeah, so yeah. A Caribbean initiative, and we're here for it, guys. That's our oh, time. Here for it. That's our time. Thank you so much Podcast for episode with Trevor Forrest comes out next Wednesday. Look out for it. Great conversation about the jam COVID issue, and um, yeah, check our stories for updates, and we'll see you next week. All right, guys. Bye. <laughs>